Hi, my name is Patrick Desjardins, and today's episode will bring us to automate TypeScript's code from a GraphQL query in a new React web project that communicates with the GraphQL server built in the eight previous episodes. Today's episode will be divided into two parts. The first one is to create a new folder where we will create a React application. The second part is how we will create a query to fetch information and then display the information to the user. I will approach this episode differently with code added into a slide deck. Let me know if you prefer this approach instead of looking at me writing the code directly. We need new NPM packages. However, this time, instead of adding the packages in the project, we will add everything in the web folder. Even in the previous cases, separating each folder into a unique project makes sense. I am doing it more naturally on the web project because it is a front-end project, while the previous code of the gRPC server and GraphQL server are both back-end. But before modifying the package, we need to install the CRA in the main package, which will be used to create the CRA folder with the package.json file that we will use for all our web packages. So let's use npm to get the create react app, the CRA, and then execute the npx script to create a folder. For that particular tool, it can be installed at the root of the project in, in your global space. So you can do npm create react app, CRA, template, and TypeScript. I'm specifying the CRA folder, but it could have been directly into the web folder and TypeScript to have the TS and TSX file, as well as the TypeScript's configuration file. We need to add three packages, the GraphQL, and Apollo Boost, which we will use to perform the query in GraphQL in the TypeScripts. Also, we need to add the React hook of Apollo if we want to connect with React hook directly without using more manual way. Here is the list of all the dependencies installed. Most are there if you use the npx command previously executed. The command creates the scaffolding for the web application. In the app.tsx, we will create an instance of Apollo client and add the URL of the current server. The client allows us to connect to a GraphQL instance, which we previously created. Make sure your server is still running. The application uses the Apollo provider, which injects in the React context information about accessing GraphQL in the underlying React components. We can create a component that will display the houses and their owners. Before jumping into the creation of the component, we will use a pattern that I prefer when consuming a GraphQL server, which is to have our query to fetch data into an individual GraphQL file. To be able to use a file with the GraphQL extension into React, we need a package that will let us import the file. To be able to load a GraphQL file from a Create React app, we need to do something. Many options are available without ejecting, but the one I found the most straightforward is to use the GraphQL.macro. The separation into a specific file encourages avoiding acts like crafting a hard to maintain query that is dynamically built or and to rely on fragment and parameters instead. Inside the GraphQL file, set the query that we will invoke and with that information, we will get the information desired. Most of the time I build everything in the playground and then copy paste in the GraphQL file. So let's get started and create the house and owner.tsx file that will fetch the data and display the content of the GraphQL response. At the top of the component, we use the import loader from the GraphQL macro and we're going to use a constant to query the loader that's going to load the GraphQL file. At that point, we have the query, 
but we still need to declare module for the extension.graphql. This way, TypeScript will not complain. From our GraphQL file, we need to get TypeScript's file generated. The generation will use the GraphQL for the query as well as the GraphQL from the server. For that task, we use again GraphQL code gen. If we, if we want, we can add the command in the main packages.json or where we're going to have all our commands in one area. We can generate the TypeScript with web colon generate colon ts and then call it the code gen. And then have the code gen that takes the schema path to the GraphQL server file that contain all the entities and the documents to all our GraphQL files in the web server. So far, we only have one. Here, you have many options. I decided to point to the GraphQL server schema directly into the GraphQL server. I had some instance that I could directly point to a URL server using retrospection like we're doing. It fetched the schema like here. In another scenario, I had to download from the GraphQL server the schema locally for the developers because of security reason. In the end, you need to know that you have many possibilities to point to the schema of a GraphQL server. Once done, we can execute the query and have the generated TypeScript into the web folder. The generated file contains the code to perform the query as well as the code for the argument of the query and the entities of the response. Our component that displays the house and the owners can import the React hook from Apollo and use the generated type and query we can pass the parameter of the three houses, then we display the information. In that case, I am looping the houses and the owner, and the autocomplete provide me which field I can display. If I need to remove or add a field, I need to change the GraphQL file, generate the TypeScript, and the code will be updated for me. This is what I call having a lot of control easily to the data without having to modify any backend code. Now let's start the server. At first, I was receiving an error saying that the declaration file for module React needed something implicitly any. That error is because we have already React in the package.json of the main source. I am getting that error because I had installed React before. I will clean the code in node module and remove it from the package.json of the root project to keep only one in the web project. Launching the server gave me an error. I decided to keep it in this episode because it could happen to you as well. That error happen only if you have a nested project as we have right now. Then I had a second issue at runtime. The issue is that the port we are trying to connect is not the right one. By port, I mean the component was trying to connect with the GraphQL hook to a server that was not available. The error on the page is showing only errors, but further details were in the stack trace showing that the server couldn't be reached. We need the same port as the playground where the GraphQL server is running. When we perform a post call, which does the React hook of Apollo, we are hitting the API instead of the web page of the playground. With the port adjusted, we see the result. The result is coming from the GraphQL, who performed the two gRPC API calls, which took the information from our fake database, which are two variables in a TypeScript file, two ups away. In this episode, we have reached the end of the project. From the inception of creating a gRPC server to having a web application consuming the GraphQL files. I will create a final episode of this series on automation of types with type scripts using gRPC and GraphQL, in which we will summarize what we learned. Meanwhile, have a good day and please like this video and subscribe if you found the content interesting. Bye bye.